water is the working fluid in the Carnot cycle, operating between 10 megapascal and 10 kilopascal. And then you also do it what we just did for an ideal Rankine vapor power cycle, the same boiler and condenser pressure. You calculate the work of the turbine for the Carnot to be 949 kilojoules per kilogram, the condenser, the pump, the boiler, the Q-net, work net, thermal efficiency, and the back work ratio. Hopefully all of these terms you're, you're very comfortable with and familiar with, right? Let's make some observations here. How did, what is the meaning of Q net? Well, that's the net heat transfer in. That's the Q of the, into the boiler minus the heat rejected by the condenser. And so this 598 is simply the boiler 1317 minus the condenser 719. All right. Also, you notice what is the work net? Well, it's the work the turbine produces minus the work that the pump consumes. And so this work net 598 is equal to 949 minus 351. All right. That's what those numbers come from. Notice also that these two numbers are the same. Is that an error, a fluke, or does that have to be always true? It's always true because energy is conserved, so the net heat into the cycle has to be net work out of the cycle. True? All right. Now, if you do the Carnot thermal efficiency using the equation that it's work net divided by Q of the boiler, so you just take the work net right here, 598, divided by Q of the boiler, 1317, you'll get 45.4%. That's the thermal efficiency. If you said, no, how about if I go 1 minus TC over TH, you'll confirm that it is good to about three to four digits, depending on how many uh, significant digits you take in all the intermediate steps, 45.4%. Same answer, which is good. The back work ratio is a very large for the Carnot efficiency, and the back work ratio was, what was that again? It was the work that the pump is required divided by the work the turbine produces. So you just take the pump is 351, and you divide it by the turbine output, 949, and you get the 37%. We just made the calculations for this ideal Rankine cycle. If you wanted to, you can go ahead and sketch on the TS diagram with the dome, the cycle, and the only difference between the Carnot and the ideal Rankine was it went over here. So this is 3 and 4, where this one was 3 and 4, true? 1 and 2 were the same. So when you look at the work that the turbine produced, they're the same, hasn't changed, which is good. How about the condenser heat transfer? Which one's larger? The ideal Rankine. That means you're throwing more heat out, true? And so why? Because you're, you're condensing more. You're moving all the way to saturated liquid. How about the work of the pump? That's significantly less, isn't it, for the ideal ranking? And so it's much, for every kilogram that you're doing a pressure boost on, you still, in both cases, you went from 10 kilopascal to 10 megapascal. It's, it costs a lot less, it's a lot fewer kilojoules per kilogram if it's in a very dense state. That integral VDP, if V is small, specific volume is small, it's very dense, then it uh, costs a lot less to boost the pressure of a fluid. And so that's what we're seeing right there. How about the boiler heat transfer? It's a lot higher, isn't it? From 13, 17 to 25, 23. Well, why is that higher? Well, before, you only heated from 4 to one for the Carnot, but now you have to heat all of this as well, true? So when it comes into the boiler, you're bringing in pretty cool, pretty low temperature compressed liquid. 
and that has to be heated up to, before it boils, it has to be heated up to the saturation temperature for that boiler. True? So that's all that extra heat. That's why it's so much larger heat transfer in the boiler. We already talked about these having to be the same, but the net workout and the net heat in is larger for the ideal Rankine. All right? You can see that from a lot more heat coming into the boiler. Also, the, the key here is the thermal efficiency. How much of that heat energy did you convert into work, work transfer? And we see that the thermal efficiency, the ideal Rankine, is lower, which is not good, but the Carnot is impractical. So this is the practical Carnot. The ideal Rankine is how close can you get to a Carnot. But here's the big one. Look at that difference in the back work ratio. 37% all the way to 1.1%. Huge, huge difference, isn't it? So this is a key to make it very practical. As an engineer, you know we don't have ideal systems, frictionless pulleys and all that. So you have to account for some losses, some friction, some irreversibilities. And this system is going to be much more forgiving than this system just on paper because you have such a smaller back work ratio. So hopefully that explains these concepts. Let me ask, why is the thermal efficiency lower for the ideal ranking? Is it because there are more irreversibilities? Is it because there's more irreversibilities? Or is the ideal ranking a purely reversible cycle? There's no irreversibilities in the turbine, is there? On the TS diagram, it's straight down. There's no irreversibilities in the pump. So if there are, if this difference is due to irreversibilities, it's not due to irreversibility differences in the pump or the turbine. But how can you have a lower thermal efficiency? It has to be due to irreversibilities. But where are the irreversibilities? From 2 to 3, you're condensing at constant temperature. And so if you're condensing at constant temperature, it's not due to the, the condenser. It's not. So that leaves, you had four components. <laughs> uh, which is the last component that we? The boiler. Now, why, why would there now be irreversibilities in the ideal ranking cycle compared to the Carnot cycle? in the boiler. Where's the boiler between state 4 and 1? Is it between 4 and 1? What's different between 4 and 1 for the Carnot and 4 and 1 in the ideal ranking? It, it's, it's this section right here. And what is the temperature here? It's low and it goes up before it hits the saturation temperature. There's really no difference in this section of bringing in the heat. But in this section, you're bringing in heat into the cycle at a low temperature. And that's always uh, not as efficient for performance as if you bring in the heat at a high temperature. So as a, as a rule, when you have power cycles, bring your heat in at as high a temperature as possible, all of your heat in, as high a temperature possible. If you can't bring it all in at the same temperature like a Carnot, then try to bring in most of it as high a temperature as possible. Likewise, when you reject heat, don't reject it at high temperatures, reject it at low temperatures, as low as possible. And so if you can do those things, it'll improve the overall thermal performance of your vapor power cycles. That's a real subtle aspect. But, but did that make sense? Look at the equation, thermal efficiencies, 1 minus T cold over TH. If you just look at it, everything comes in at TC, make TC low. Everything comes in at TH, make TH high, good for performance. But nothing always comes in 100% all at TC or all at TH. 
but try to minimize coming in at low values of TH. Bring as much heat in at high TH, and likewise, minimize throwing out at high TC, throw it out at low TCs.